it. The Bible reading for today shall be taken from the book of Exodus chapter 15, verse 22 to 27. Exodus 15, 22 to 27. I read, So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went into the wilderness of Saul. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. 23. And when they came to Maria, and they could not drink of the water of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of the place was called Mara. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, a tree, which when he cast into the water, the water were made sweet. There he made for them a statue and, and an ordinance, and there he proved them. 26. And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to my voice, the voice of the Lord, and we do what which is right in his sight, and we give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, and we put none of this disease upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that he let thee. The last verse 27. And they came to Elim, where, where were 20, 20, 12 wells of water, and three scores and ten palm trees, and they come there by the waters. The Lord breath is reading in Jesus' name. All in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm excited to speak with you again today, this Sabbath morning. We thank God for sustenance for his goodness, for his favor upon all of us. To him be the glory and honor in the name of Jesus Christ. This morning, I am going to talk with you on what I've titled, When Things Go Wrong. When Things Go Wrong. Let's bow our heads wherever we are as we seek the Lord in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we have come again today to worship you. It is time to hear you speak to us. Father, we have never done anything good without you. So Lord, I bow before you, asking that your power will come through me, that every word I will speak will be inspired by you. Use these words to encourage your people and assure them of a better future. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayers. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. When things go wrong. Someone said, when things go wrong, you look up to the sunshine, you will not see any trace of shadow. You want to see the rainbow, you don't look down, you look up. When things go wrong. Let me tell you friends that we are living in a world with very real problems and we need to have very real answers. Jesus came not just to lead us to heaven but that through his death his kingdom will break into our everyday lives. So that when times of suffering, times when things go wrong comes, then we have words of hope to offer those who need them. When things go wrong, I think about Job. But as you look at the life of Job from the beginning to the end, you can also see to Revelation as you think about your life. God has promised in Revelation that he will wipe away all tears from the eyes of the righteous. And I want you to note that God will wipe every tears off from the eyes of the righteous. But there is not only the promise of heaven, but God promises and blesses for us in this life as the true. Even when things go wrong, when things are rough, God is still there. He is there to get us through. I'd like you to journey with me from the Red Sea. You remember the experience of the Red Sea? And at this point, 
They had crossed the Red Sea and Moses had to lead the children of Israel to the wilderness of Shur. And as they traveled, it was a three days journey they have gone. Of course, three days journey in the wilderness will really bring thirst for water. And so every one of them began to feel thirsty and they needed to drink. Let me tell you, three days is a long time to go without finding water. Especially if you have little ones on the floor with you. Not see mothers for that matter. But you see, when there is a sight of water, the, king's wrong, the kids run. Laughing, whooping. But just a taste of that water was a different thing. Gagging, wiping their tongues on their sleeves. Why? The water was bitter. The water was bitter. The people looked at God and they looked at his face as you betrayed us. We thought living in Egypt we were coming to plenty, drinking good water. We had just crossed the Red Sea. We had hope only to bring us the water that is bitter. You betrayed us, they say. They, open, they opened their mouths to speak and the Mara life pours out. In Hebrew, the word Mara means both bitter and rebellious. Let me pause and let you, let you know that Mara that is on check will bring about hard hearts and stiff necks. When Pharaoh demonstrated both toward the Lord, it was disease and death for his people that resulted. But I would like you to know that God is interested in us. And I want to tell you, as you are watching, you are viewing, wherever you are, I assure you that God is interested in you. It doesn't matter the matter that you are going through. God is interested not just for you to remain in that matter, but to get you out of that matter. Once there was Mara, there was the Hebrew word is. Is means a tree. And so God called Moses. Moses, take that tree. Note that God did not say, go and take any tree. He showed him the particular one to take. And he dropped it into the water. And the waters are healed. Hallelujah. Sweeting. God does more than just provide one spring of water and so they drank but after that there was something better and I want you to know this hour that every Mara after every Mara there is something better and I want to assure you that there's something better for you my people wherever you are there is something better for you in the name of Jesus Christ but the question is why Mara in the first place why would God take us through hard times, times where things are wrong? Why would God do that? But I'd like you to know that God was bringing the children of Israel from Egypt. He was looking for a bride, a people that he can walk in, people that can trust him, that can have confidence in him, that he can trust also. He was looking for such people. And so through the experience of Mara, they would trust God the more. As I think of that tree, I think of the experience of Eve in the garden. When Satan called her and invited her to the tree, she, he made her to see the tree as sweet. And so disobedience to God will also be sweet since the tree was sweet and God was saying, don't eat it. And you know, sometimes we think that disobedience is easy. And you know what happened? Like we read in Isaiah chapter 50. You know, the, the, that disobedient spirit that was in Eve, uh, Pharaoh, sorry, that was in Eve, had entered into our DNA. 
And so we think that independence is sweet. And obedience is bad, bitter. My friends, i like you to know that for us as Christians, I picture that tree in two. The first was the experience of Adam and Eve in the garden that I've shared with you. The second is the cross. Praise God for the cross. Praise God for the cross. Remember, after the cross, the crown will come. And so, we also look at the Torah, the law. That is, when you obey the law, you are driven to the cross. And at the cross, you find healing. The word of God declared, by his stripes, we are healed. And I say to you, in the name of Jesus, whatever you may be going through at this hour, you are healed in the name of Jesus Christ. God will heal you and he will restore healing to you. As we obey, we find that our obedience is driven, is motivated by the experience of the cross. Not only so, our law is now to find sweet life by taking up our cross daily as we die to self. We read in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. For he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, we are healed. Amen. Amen. And so, this isn't just a straightforward miracle, you remember, of provision. It is a parable life, more like the signs of the John's Gospel. And that also reminds me of the experience of the Samaritan woman. Jesus meeting the Samaritan woman. And he said, give me water to drink. And he says, which water? Who will give you water? Remember the relationship between the Samaritans and the Jews. And Jesus said, if you know who is asking you for water, is the one that we can give you water and you would never test again. My friends, God will give you waters of life. As we go through this experience of hard time, all the strength that you need, the Lord will give you. All that you need to go through, God is going to supply to you. And so he says in verse 26 of Exodus chapter 15, he says, if you listen to the Lord, if you do what is right, if you attend to his law and keep his decree, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians. For I am the Lord who heals you. Hallelujah. I am the Lord who heals you. If only you will obey. If only you will follow him. If only you will do that which he wants you to do. I would bring none of these diseases and I say in the name of Jesus Christ none of you will experience coronavirus you may hear but it will not come near, near your dwelling you would experience it in the name of Jesus Christ because God is going to protect you as you listen you know I also want to remind you somebody gave an illustration which I find interesting the word, the words, bitter and better, both start with B and end with tha. The only difference is the letter I and E. Bitter has the focus on I, me, myself, flesh. During this crisis, as you focus on I, on me, on myself, it will be bitter. Remember somebody says, when you look down, you can't see rainbow down. It is when you look up. But, better has a focus on God. Exalting Him. Praising Him. Going through it in the name of Jesus. You will experience better. When we take the focus of self 
and turn it to God, our life turns from bitter to better in the name of Jesus Christ. I'd like to remind you, my friends, that there is if that God used in verse 26. And he says, if you listen to me carefully, if you, if, if you listen, if you do what is right and obey my commandments, then healing will come. Healing will come. I'd like you to know that after Mara, God took them to a better place. And I want to assure you, something better is awaiting you. As you trust him and as you rely on him, something better is awaiting you. Because God led them to Elim. Elim, you have, there's, there, there they found 12 springs. Not only 12 springs, there was also 17 palm trees. 12 springs of water shows that the water of life is there. They will test no more. But beyond was the 70 palm tree, which means they were going to enjoy abundance. My friends, abundance is waiting for you. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. So I encourage you, my people, that at a time like this, we need courage to continue. Somebody said, when things do not go your way, remember that every challenge, every adversity contains within its seeds of opportunity and growth. As a roundup, I want to encourage you that you need to be strong. My last verse for you this morning is Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, not be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that do, that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. I assure you at this time that as we move on, just keep looking up to him and you are sure of victory. As we look up to him, we are sure that at a time like this, God is going to carry us on. He's going to carry us on, my people. Life is easy. When you are on the mountain and you have got peace of mind like you have never known. But things change when you are down in the valley. Don't lose faith for you are never alone. I remind you, after Mara, God is going to take you to a place of abundance. Just focus on him. When things go wrong, it shall be well in Jesus' name. Amen. Life is easy when you're up on the mountain and you've got peace of mind like you've never known. But things change when you're down.
Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much. Remember, the word of the Lord says, Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them, for the Lord has at this time. That's Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways then i will hear from heaven and i will forgive their sins and i will heal their land the lord will heal our land of coronavirus god is going to heal our land wherever you are i invite you to bow your heads let's pray that god will forgive us that God will give us the heart of humility, that we can turn to seek his face, especially at this time. Wherever you are, I invite you to bow your heads while we talk together. I give you a moment as we pray together now. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes as we pray. Father in heaven, our King, our Creator, our Redeemer, the one in whom we put our trust, I remember the prayer of Daniel at a time like this. He will say unto us, beyond confusion of faces, we have sinned, we have disappointed you, we have gone astray. Father, please have mercy. Have mercy on us as individuals. Have mercy on the land. Father, bring healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Bring restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. Visit every quarter, visit every community, visit every town, every city, visit every country. And Lord, may you attend to our prayers at this time. Thank you because we are sure that victory is sure. We are sure that you will attend to our prayers because we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We have a number of prayers that we are going to pray on. Um, the first one, this period has given me, okay, this period has given me time to look within and face some of my demons. It has also made me make some tough decisions. I pray for strength to carry through and excel. I pray for healing. I pray for strength to make wet. I pray for discipline and I pray that a love for God would saturate my life in Jesus' name. Amen. God will answer your prayers and we're going to pray on that. Please pray for healing for me. Pray for job opportunity. Excellent spirit for my children. Ability to maximize my potentials. Divine breakthrough in my hobbies business. Perfect heart for my family. Provision for my family. Peace, love and unity in my family. Pray for God to send the Holy Spirit for comfort and interpretation of his word. For God to see us through these challenges. For God to console all those who have lost a loved one. For provision and sustainability. Right? Yes. For his guidance. That's okay. And then I want to commit my forthcoming exams and my school project to God's hands. God has been really good for thus far. I would like God to please grant my desires to secure a scholarship abroad to further my studies. Right now, I don't know how that will happen, but I trust in Him. God will do it in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to grow. I'm tired of being in one position. Healing mercies, using my parents as point of contact to those whom I know to be feeling unwell. A good job, so divine upliftment in Okay, financial blessings to be able to face all expenses ahead of me and to help others. Success in my academic endeavors. Okay, so I recently got laid off from my job and I'm a student who is sponsoring herself 
So I pray for God's immense provision and blessing as I begin a new chapter of doing my own business in a little way. I also pray that my loved ones, those far away and near, will be kept under the shadow of God's wings. Amen. 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 May God heal our land. May God cause thee to be a restoration of all that has been lost. I pray for the sustenance of my job and for elevation to a better one. Yes, that's okay. That's all right. We are going to pray at this time a number of them. I want to assure you that as long as we have read that God has heard your request and God is going to answer your prayers in the name of Jesus Christ. So wherever you are, I invite you to bow your heads and close your eyes. Let's pray on this request. Father in heaven, our King, our Creator, this hour we have presented our request to you. Several requests from, has come from different people and different places. And we have presented them to you, our God who is able. You have promised. We are relying on the promise of your word that if my, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and confess their sins and seek your face, you promise that you will forgive them their sins. Some of our people had actually said that they have disappointed you at one time or the other. As they confess and as we confess, please may you forgive them all. Forgive all of us in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, O oh God. Some have lost their job. I pray that as this lockdown will be lifted, that they are going to get new jobs. They are going to get better jobs. Some have asked also for scholarship. Father, may you provide for them. Some are asking for breakthrough in their lives. Father, cause a breakthrough to take place in their lives. I pray for transformation. Some of them have confessed that they have been struggling with forces of darkness. I pray, oh God, may you break into their lives every stronghold, every chain, every bond that is in their life. Father, break them in the name of Jesus Christ. And I ask that as they, wherever they are now, as we call on you, and as they trust on you, Father, you said, no more comment unto you that you will cast out. As we mention them to you, Father, may you attend to their prayers. May you attend to them one by one. I also know that there are some of us who have not opened up, who have not spoken, but they have pain in their heart. Especially this time, one of them said, it is difficult. He has his time of remaining in one position. We can't move. Father, let there be breakthrough. As we call on you today, Father, let there be breakthrough. Yes, the figures are rising and they are frightening. But I know that there is nothing you cannot do. I remember hunger in the land. And you said by this time tomorrow there is going to be a change. Father, you are the same God of yesterday, today and forever. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will change situation change situation. I ask that you will break into this country. You will break into Lagos. And Lord, may you cause things to cease. Bring healing. Bring healing. Put idea in someone's mind that will bring healing and restoration. We know that these are signs. These are evidence that soon you will come. Father, may you prepare all of us. Prepare my people. Prepare everyone that by your grace we will all be ready. I pray, mighty God, that all the requests we made or not have mentioned them one by one, but we believe that you have attended to them all and that everyone is going to rejoice because you have promised. These requests have not come to me, they have come to you. Father, may you attend to them. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayers. Take the glory, take the honor. Today, I pray for my people. As we face another new week, Lord, from Ikorudu to Ketu Alakbere to Leki and down to Alagomeji, Ebutemeta, also through Surulele and Isolo, those of my people in Ketu, Father, I pray that you visit them all. Visit them all. In Sabo, visit them all. Visit all my people wherever they are. And all those who have tuned in, Father, may you visit them. Change their situation. You have promised that as a time like this, if it were possible, you will send a raven to feed. 
none of my people will go with coronavirus. In the name of Jesus Christ. When it is all over and we come together and we are counting, none will be missing. By your grace, we will all be together. Thank you, Father, for hearing our prayers. Take the glory. Take the honor. Since we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you all. See you next week again.